<clears throat> and I want to read you uh, a little poem from this book because that will lead on to the story of how this book came out um, of the same place. So this is, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you in a nutshell the story of the genesis of a novel. What happened was, I was backpacking around Ecuador, just holiday, really. This was seven years ago, eight years ago. And I stumbled across this place on the, Ecuador is a Pacific country, so it's got the Pacific coast, the west coast of South America. I stumbled across this place, it was a hostel, um, and it, it, it was the end of that road. It was a dusty, um, sort of impoverished village, nothing remarkable, it wasn't really in the tourist kind. And I stayed there for a few days with this expat couple, who were sort of old hippies, you know, chain smoking, really enjoyed, they, they go native, they were Europeans, I can't remember what they were. Because now, in my consciousness, they are the characters I created out of them. So I can't remember the original prospects anymore. I even can't remember the name of the place because I fictionalized it and now that's become the real place. So actually, the original experience and then the fictional reimagining of it have, have merged, as, as, as they sometimes do when you fictionalize places and people. And so I stayed there for a few days and it was just, just another kind of Backpacking experience actually it wasn't even backpacking. They had these lovely chalets in the jungle, so it was a, it was a tropical, sort of semi-tropical environment. But I'd already done that in Ecuador elsewhere, so there's nothing remarkable about that place, except there was. It just felt the energy there felt different. Uh, this couple fascinated me, the expat couple who ran this hostel. It was it felt to me like a haunted place. You know, sometimes you walk into a house. Or you, walk, or you walk around the forest and you just feel this energy. You know, that's what, that's, what, that's what hauntedness is. You feel there's something there. So something about that place fascinated me and I sort of kept prolonging my stay. I was initially going to stay for one night and then I stayed for two and then, and then it was a week. And I couldn't explain to myself I was with that boyfriend and he wasn't so keen to stay on. I was just fascinated by that place. We walked around in the scorching heat, quite arid <coughs> landscapes to be on the compound of the hostel. Um, or at least that's how it is in London. Maybe I am in fact now telling you a lie about the original place, which is the whole point of fiction. I fictionalized so well <laughs> in my own head that this is how it felt. At least in my character it did. In other words, the place haunted me. And even while I was there, this is very unusual. Andrew read a little, a little thing as about Cambridge. And I said, what's the mood? And he said, it's nostalgic. Already you feel nostalgic even though you're still here. And I felt like that there. Even though I was still there, I was already haunted by it. It was already not leaving me alone. It was, it was an intense kind of experience of, of place. And this is always personal. I think when we have an intense experience of a place, there's something personal about that. That place is somehow calling out to us. You know, someone else might have not. The boyfriend I was with didn't feel that. So I think it's, you know, it was an imaginative um, as well as, uh, as a kind of energetic experience. And I think fiction has to come from a personal charged place, as Richard said. And I'll just read it out. I call it How to Build Your Dream Garden, which is what this expat couple had done. And they built their dream garden. Year one. At the end of a dusty road, find a malarial swamp. Drain and fill with earth. Get sick. Curse the day you came. Year two, construct a wooden cabin with shelves for doorknobs, mist for glass. Lie and listen to the waves. Remember, you were sick before you came. Year three, plant seeds. The earth muffles the past with leaves and roots. Now wait for someone to come in the stand. Year four, the colored birds of paradise ride, the iguanas balance on the plants. Lost strangers come and never leave. Smile knowingly. Year ten, stop counting. Isn't this why you came? Now dream to the beat of waves, the only dream that's left. Dream that the gun goes to seed. The iguanas grow to monsters and go to strangers in the dust. The locals talk for generations. 
and the sea, the sea takes care of everything. So I went on my way, went back to Scotland, to Edinburgh, got on with the project I was doing at the time, which in fact was the travel guide to Bulgaria. So from, from, from this intense experience, I had to go back to this rather a literal experience of, of writing another travel guide and I was very unhappy doing that um, and a year later I found that I still had dreams about that place so the poem was not enough to exercise it perhaps had I been a short story writer I would have written a short story and that would have been somehow slightly more substantial and sufficient and that would have told the story that this poem is telling because it's a narrative poem clearly it's a poem that's kind of bursting out to be something bigger, maybe. Maybe. Well, that's how it felt to me. But I'm not a short story writer. So I couldn't produce a short I don't write short stories. They're too difficult. So it had to be a novel. 